Hi everyone, so in today's video, I'll be going over this um, script, which we already started. So we're going to continue on um, and just kind of creating some openings on the inside and also creating like a window um, that's kind of symmetrical. So um, I'll be kind of going over those right now. Um, so if you do have any questions or anything, just make sure to let me know and check the description for the script because I'll be sharing that one uh, so you guys can play around with it. Also, if you haven't uh, seen this video, it is a video that I've done in the past, so it'll be the, um, you'll probably see it on the thumbnail, but it'll be this script. So uh, what we're going to do is just take this and I'm going to unplug it from here just so we don't have the materials yet because we're still going to work on this. Um, now let's go ahead and also bring back this surface, right? And we see that we have this complete surface. So what I want to do is just take that and offset it. So I'll go ahead and offset the curve, but I actually won't do that surface. I'll actually do the curve. And now you'll see that it offsets in, which is what we want. If it didn't offset in, then you would flip the direction of the curve. Um, but this is working, so let's go ahead and offset it. 12. So I'll offset the 12 here. And there we have our offset that we can now, so this one's previewed, I'll disable the preview, and then I'll create a boundary surface here. Creating a surface basically here that I'm going to extrude. So when I extrude this, I'm going to extrude it down to all the way out the same length. So I'll go ahead and bring in an extrude component. I'll plug in this surface. And then I actually want to extrude it the same amount as this so let's go ahead and bring in I'll preview this one and see that this extrusion was extruded 91 times 12 which gives us 1092 and then that goes into the factor which is our vector so this is going to be our direction I'll disable the preview on this one and now we have the surface so we extruded out right so what I want to do is I actually want to take this and rotate it around and I want to do a Boolean difference uh, from those forms. So I'll take this and we'll actually, we're going to rotate it the same way as this is. So what I'm going to do is take this, slide it up here, hold alt and it'll make a copy. Now I can take this geometry and plug it in right into the geometry there and then I can preview and notice that now I have this rotated one and this other one, right? So the next step is going to be to subtract from these two that are put together. So let's go ahead and do a difference. So we're going to go to solid difference. We have the outer form, which we'll plug into A because that's what we want to keep. And then into B, we're going to plug in both this extrusion and this geometry. And I'll go to flatten here. And I'll take these two back here, middle click, disable preview. And then I'll disable the preview also on this outer one. And we'll notice that now we have this really cool opening, right? That is determined by the offset here. So we'll just make it 12. And now we have a really cool architectural form with an opening to the inside. So little by little, we're working our way into completing this building. Now I can disable the preview and you'll see it a lot better here. And even if we go into render view, notice how cool it is. And what's even what's what I like a lot about it is that we have the ability still to change anything and everything here is super clean and very, um, yeah, super precise, right? Because we're eliminating any type of human error by creating a script like this now what would be critical once we kind of work our way down here is going to be to take this information and clean it up and organize it now i haven't done that i'll probably do that at the end of this video and do a time lapse but i just want to share with you how important it is for you to be able to go back here and understand all of your vectors all of your dimensions and all of your sliders and how you could use them in conjunction with your script here towards the end so let's go ahead and continue back here so i'll go to shaded view and we'll continue on creating this form so i'll unplug 
that just so I can see the grasshopper preview. And now let's go ahead and create a window, windows in front here. So we already have most of the information that we need. So I'll go here to this boundary surface that I just created back here. So I'll right click preview. And I actually want to move this in, right? So we want to create like an overhang here and an inset. So I'm going to take, I'll move this down to get more space. Take this one and I'm going to move it. This one. Now I can say move it in the same direction as how we extruded it. So it's going to be in the Y direction, but there's another way to just extrude perpendicular to the face. Uh, so right now it's moving it up. If we want to move it perpendicular to this face, we're going to bring in an amplitude component and we'll plug in the surface into here, which is going to go perpendicular to it. Now the motion here, and now we'll see that it's moving in. So now all we need to plug in is the amplitude, which is gonna allow us to pick a certain value. So I'll go to 36. Cool, so now I have 36 here. I'll plug it into here. And now we have this really cool um, offset here. And all we have to do is create one because all we also all we have to do is just rotate this around um, as we did here. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this surface that we just moved and let's go ahead and subdivide it. Okay, so I've thought about it a bit and I think for me, the best way to subdivide this one is going to be to create, to just create a quick frame. So this is going to be just a grid structure and we can plug that surface into here. Now, this one is going to be found in um, Lunchbox, which you can download for free. On, um, you can find it in Food for Rhino. And so we'll take these curves and we're going to actually split. So let's go here to intersect, physical, surface split. We're going to plug in the lines as our curves, our surface as this surface. And what it'll do is once I disable the preview here, it'll just take our original surface, which was this one, and it'll trim it down depending on where the curves are. So now this is going to be our subdivision of like five and five. So let's go ahead and just plug these here so we can mess around with uh, what we have here. So let's say we wanted just three in this direction and then five up, then we can kind of do something like this. Uh, let's go to actually five here and then three vertical. Cool. So now that we have these fragments, what I like about Lunchbox is that it has the frame component, which is basically just scaling it down to the center point, uh, which will give us this. So for some reason, this one's actually not working um, so what I'll have to do is do it um, in a different way so I'll go to an area component bring in the area component here bring in the center point now we can go ahead and scale so we can scale these fragments relative to their center point and I can say a factor of 0.9. So 0.9 is going to make a thin frame because I'm only doing 0.9 of that. So I'll take that and now I can do a region inter uh, difference. So let's see if this will work. Sometimes um, when I work on this stuff, I'm not 100% sure it's going to work. So I have to figure out the best way uh, to kind of show you guys how to do it. So let's try a region difference. We're going to take the fragments A this geometry as B and now if we disable preview and we do a boundary surface we'll see that we have the result in between so there's this frame and this frame we can extrude to give it some thickness so let's take this one and extrude it in which direction? Well, we can do perpendicular to that, or we could already use the amplitude that we have back here. 
So I'll take this, copy it over, because we're using the same base plane. And this amplitude, we can plug into the direction here. So that'll be really thick, but we can just make it six inches. And disable the preview here. And so now we can come back here and increase or decrease the subdivisions on our window here. So just messing around with the parameters here. And it's not too heavy, but still, um, the more we do here, the heavier it's gonna get. So lastly is we have this, which all we have to do is rotate it around um, one, two, three times. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's take, or actually the easiest way is gonna be to take this and have a mirror plane here. So we're gonna have a X, Z plane in the middle and a Y, Z plane in the middle. What's the middle? Where it's going to be the uh, centroid that we picked right in the center. And that's going to be this point. So in this point, we'll bring a Y, Z plane and an X, Z plane. And in this centroid, we'll plug in the origin. And you'll see that now these two planes are created right in the middle. These are going to be our mirror planes. So we'll go to mirror first. We'll take our original one and we'll take this one, plug it in here. And we're actually only going to need our YZ, YZ plane or XZ plane. Sorry about that. Now we can plug this one right into the plane here and you'll see that everything that's done here is, is mirrored here. Now, instead of mirroring it, well, we would have to mirror it diagonal for it to mirror here. So what I'm going to do is just um, do the same thing that we did before. So rotate 90 degrees. So I'll just take this one here, hold alt, and it'll just make a copy. Then I can plug in the geometry right into here and I can preview and notice that it's now it's here. But the reason why I didn't do it is because it only rotated one. So as soon as I plug this one into the geometry, it'll rotate the other one. So what's happening here is that this is the only one that's actually being created. At the end, it's being mirrored and then rotated around once to copy. So hopefully that made sense. If it doesn't, like I said, give it a try, download it. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, and yeah, so because that's going to be the only way for you to kind of understand it. And I've been using it for quite a bit. So um, if you <clears throat> are kind of new, um, just stick with it. You'll get it in time. And like I said, I'm going to clean this up now and share it with you guys uh, so you can play around with it. Um, so I'll do a time lapse on that. And thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys um, subscribing and liking the videos.